Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about practice or not practice. I know in the circles of non-duality, there has, um, you know, the mind, the, the ego can really hijack and take beautiful pointers and make them into uh, an absolute truth reality in a sense of conceptualized ideas, not as an experiential felt sense. So uh, when I hear a lot of people, when they do tap into the beauty of non-duality and just kind of really feeling the resonance with it, which is wonderful, uh, but then taking on an idea of you are that, you already awake, um, that there's nothing to do, nothing to be done, no practices needed. Um, and all that is good when, when, when the internal state is already ready to really recognize that in direct experience, in experiential felt sense of what it truly means. But not until then, I can tell you that practices have their place. Practice have, has the most fundamental, practice will be the most fundamental part to your spiritual journey until it no longer is needed. And if, if your driving force is true curiosity to find who and, who and what you are in the most experiential felt sense of it, not just an intellectual conceptualized idea, so you will be driven to start listening to your own intuition that will drive you and you'll let you know that practices are great to balance the nervous system, to really let go of energy blockages through yoga, whatever, tai chi or anything else, to get in touch with a felt sense of energy and how it feels, to get in touch with a felt sense of presence and how it feels. So practices are beautiful. I have, I have been on the yoga mat every single day, mostly. No, I, I, I'm not going to lie. There were definitely days. There were definitely even months that I, I was not doing anything. But uh, that, that earnestness, that, that longing for truth kept me going. And it really helped. It really made the difference. It really balanced my nervous system to a degree uh, doing the yoga asanas every day and doing the meditation every day, and doing the breathing exercise every day, it balanced my nervous system to such degree that triggers or other uh, ways that, that could sabotage my path, sabotage my uh, commitment to finding truth were almost non-existent. Uh, and to a point where the nervous system was so relaxed that the self-blame or guilt trip that would happen if I wouldn't practice was not even there. There was this softness about the experience itself, you know, and there's, of course, it also happens through trust, knowing that, you know, we are going to be given what we need in the right time, in the right place, and trusting that. So, so all that to say, practice was so needed and so helpful that practice of seamlessness, being one with sound, being one with vibration, being one with a mantra. It was so needed for the mind to be so focused that the, the noise and the distraction from our actual natural state, which is already awake, which is already, uh, already full and whole and unwounded, and unmoved and all these beautiful things, but to recognize that the, the, the habits that we have, uh, the mind habitual jumping from one thing to another and this habitual tensing in our bodies upon contractions and upon triggers and upon ideas and this kind of uh, ego state that distracts us constantly from what is already awake what is already vigilant, peaceful, serene within you, not even within you, <laughs> who and what you are. Um, so to recognize that, to realize that these practices are needed. The same thing goes to the Killaby inquiries, like they, they are needed until they are not. 
when you clear the way, when you deprogram whatever is in the way of peace, whatever is in the way of being right here, right now, eventually it's not so much needed. Here and there, you might have something that arises and that you would like to look at. The same thing with practice. My direct experience was with practicing mantra repetition. And it was needed until it no longer was needed until I got the message sitting in the Ramana Ashram in the meditation hall and repeating my mantra. And then at the same time, you know, uh, with the intention to, to experience directly who and what I am, then I got this message. Like, if you came here to experience who you are, why are you covering it with sound? I'm like, oh, okay this is done. <laughs> so my mantra repetition had finished right there. And there was, of course, the grace and the gift of true experiential felt sense of this prolonged I amness that was happening for, for quite a few days after that. So all that to say, practices are beautiful, are beautiful until if it's not a hindrance, if it's not a way to hide, if the ego is not hijacking to, you know, with a felt sense of what is this? What, what is it here for me? You know, <laughs> what is this here for me? And this, what is this here for me? Because if we do allow ourselves to focus and fall into that, um, fall for that, basically, if we allow that to happen, then uh, the practices are not actually going to be as, um, as beneficial, because what are we going to be paying attention to is actually just a tool for the mind to be able to pay attention to what's already here, complete, peaceful, serene, awake. So, um, and if you are at the stage of where practices are no longer needed, what the beauty of that is to start really um, tuning in, tuning in. It's just the inside gets so tuned into subtleties. We become so aware of subtleties. And these subtleties of so, some nuances, inner nuances that are going to be guiding us to pay attention here, or to look here, or to inquire here, or to sit with this, or to simply sit without the need to do anything. So wherever you are, you know, don't let the ego hijack your experience by blaming practices because they didn't get you anywhere, or not doing practices because Either you're jumping from one place to another or didn't necessarily commit it to not just the tool itself, but to also finding with this tool, what else is here? What else is unchangeable underneath all of these techniques and all of these practices? What is it here? Like when I sit down and meditate, apart from my tool of concentration or point of focus or point of letting go, what else is here? Yeah. Explore. Stay curious. Much love.